You better change the battery in your carbon monoxide detector because there are some embers burning bright in London. James Newman is singing the song Embers at Eurovision 2021 for the United Kingdom. Shall we talk about it? <laughs> Let's do this! Yes, this is super exciting. James Newman is back for the BBC and he's gone in a completely new direction. Last year he had an emotional ballad. This year he's bringing a bit of fun, something uplifting, something we all need right now. This song to me is very radio friendly. I could hear this on the radio, I could hear it on Spotify. It's not reinventing the wheel, but that's okay. Not all music needs to. Sometimes it's enough just to give a happy contribution that's true to you. This sounds like some of his past work, you know, with groups like Rudimental, using a combination of horns and other instruments to give us this feel-good sound. Long story short, I think this is a huge step in the right direction for the United Kingdom. I was very pleasantly surprised. I think he looks great in that coat in the music video where he turns, turns, pose, live, work, pose. I'm here for it. Congratulations. All right, Oliver in the UK, let's start with you. I have to agree. I think this is a massive glow up for the UK. James really seems like he's genuinely enjoying himself. I know we've only really seen the music video, we've not seen it live, but you can get a real sense of happiness from it. And that's really nice. If, an, if a performer likes their song, the audience is going to like the song as well. I think that is always a key ingredient. Musically, yeah, it's been done a lot of times before. And I do think this is lacking a little something for me. I love the idea of having the horn riff, this big chorus, but it's just not quite impactful enough. And I think because it starts out the gate so strong, so uplifting, there's not much room for it to grow. Um, you know, there's there's not really much room for development after the first couple of choruses. So by the time the last chorus comes around, it's like, OK, this is kind of dying out a little bit. Embers aren't a roaring flame. They are the the dying ashes of a fire. And that is a little bit how I feel here. I think if if the chorus had a bit more oomph with Blas Mafian featuring Hazel, those horns from that, if the horn sounded a bit more like that, I think this would be stellar. But it's just lacking that punch for me. Let me just say, when the fire goes out at the campfire, I am often very excited because I'm ready to get back to the city. Before we turn to Lucy, let me just quote James. He says, speaking to the BBC, Embers is about those sparks that don't die out. When we were writing this, it felt like I wanted to show everyone that we were coming back together. It's about having that connection and something reigniting. It's about us emerging from this rubbish time we've been having. It fits with the idea that Eurovision is coming back. Lucy. I disagree with Oliver. Um, and you to an extent, William, because I don't think this particularly has been done before, like at Eurovision specifically, because I think it's a very British sounding genre of within like pop EDM because it's it sounds like Sigala, it sounds like something that belongs on Love Island. And whilst I'm not a viewer of Love Island, I think that's a huge compliment because it's something British people like, which is something the BBC haven't done in a while. Um, so, you know, it's something that could actually do well here commercially. And that is like the biggest step up that the, that we needed from a UK Eurovision song lately. We needed something that the British public would actually be on board with. And I think that this is very likable. And like, it sounds great when it's played. On, it was played on Radio 1, which is for non-UK people watching. That's kind of more the youth orientated BBC radio channel. And then, but it's always been played on Radio 2, which is the most popular radio station in the UK. It's getting a lot of airtime compared to for example, like, well, just previous UK songs, and people are really enjoying it. I'm seeing a lot less, um, let's say, typical 
UK local views on Facebook, I'm seeing a lot more positivity. I mean, it's always going to be around a little bit, but there is more positivity than there's ever been, I think, because it's a relevant entry to now. Um, I think that kind of going down that BMG route was the best thing they could have ever done. And again, kind of disagreeing with another point of yours, Oliver, um, where you kind of say it doesn't build. I think from those low, like kind of quieter notes at the beginning, going into the, I'm not going to sing, but the light up the room and then like the full on, uh, uh, like it, it goes bam. And I can just see like, I mean, we did an interview with James Newman and he kind of has hinted that there's going to be a, a moment during when they say light up the room. I'm going to be here for that. If they do something cool, like I, I feel like they could really turn that into a big moment. So it progresses through the song. I don't know if they'll do it in the first chorus. It'll be interesting to know if it's just one big bit at the end or they do something cool throughout the song. I do think it can progress when you add staging into it. And as we know from what they were saying about staging with the UK last year, they've got a bigger budget this year. They've got a lot more backing from the BBC. There's a lot more uh, faith in us with Eurovision to actually do something. And I think it's really come through with Embers. I think it's it's an absolute bop, raging bop. <laughs> Out of the Embers, you and I are going to light up the room. Yeah, you and I are going to light up the room. Out of the Embers, there's a fire burning for you, Suzanne, in the United States of America. In Atlanta, Georgia, at that, um, where we actually are from. Okay, so back to the United Kingdom, where you think you're from now, or where you presently reside. Um, <laughs> so I really like this song, Embers. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I did not like James Newman's song last year. <clears throat> I had a real disconnect with the staging and the video and his song, and I just... Last year did nothing for me. This year, I really like it. Um, it's warm. It's upbeat. I enjoyed everything going on in the video. Um, it's fun. It's a happy love song. And it talks about feelings change, feelings and seasons changing. We're never in the same space forever. Relationships take hard work. Maintaining a relationship is really hard work. Take my hand and forget the past. We're in this together. Nothing will burn us out, right? We're going to light up the room. And going back to the reference to the past, it's almost as though they both come out of something that wasn't positive. And I kind of felt like this song was about a new or a newer love. And they've learned from their life lessons. And now they are emerging from their own past loves that have burnt out creating something new that will last long term um long story short i really did like the song and again was incredibly pleasantly surprised well dang she studied those lyrics she had some meaning that was on point no i just got my spreadsheet in front of me Okay, extemporaneous speaker extraordinaire. Now, I want to bring up a comment that's on weeblogs.com. Someone named This Isn't Your Last Dance <laughs> writes, The kind of song that no one dislikes, but no one brings themselves to vote for it either. This is a usual problem for the UK. James is really cute. It will be sad if this ends up in the bottom six, hoping for amazing staging, but then again, that's the UK. Okay, well, that was maybe a little negative at the end. I didn't realize. But I do take the point here that this is a pleasant song, and I think we all see some merit in it. But I do worry, will enough people vote for it so it can rise up the scoreboard? I'm not sure. And that that is not shade. That is just saying, you know, it takes a special quality for people to actually pick up the phone, spend some coin, you know, use those fingers. Um, but I'm hopeful. I don't want this to come near the bottom, and I don't think it deserves to come near the bottom. And I'm hopeful this will inch towards the left-hand side of the scoreboard with excellent staging. That is my hope. That is my wish. Um, in any case, I think we should actually go around and give our scores out of 10, along with the justification and anything else you want to say, starting with Oliver in the UK. I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. Like I said, I think this is a massive step up for the UK. But like you said, I think this could struggle to get out of the bottom five. I don't see it going to the left-hand side of the leaderboard. Reason being, this is kind of an 11th place in the jury song. 
you know, zero points go to the United Kingdom because it's just not quite as impactful. I think it's very credible, very inoffensive, happy to listen to it, enjoyable, would love to hear this on the radio. And James deserves all of the chart success here. But at Eurovision, I just don't see this picking up the points it needs to do well, unfortunately. Lucy. First and foremost, above all things, Eurovision is a party. And people are going to... They, they need music like this right now. And I do think it will pick up because James is one hell of a songwriter. James is a fantastic vocalist. Like, we have not got to worry about the vocals on the night. Um, he'll be dancing, which I'm not sure, like, kind of how that's going to go. Hopefully it's good. He's doing dance lessons, bless him. So hopefully that's great. Um, but I do think that if they bring the right energy, if they bring the right vibe that staging, it's going to get votes from jury. It's not coming 11th in all juries or 11th or lower, should I say, because I think it's just like so exciting. And I do think it's going to come kind of more. I, I, I'm not being unrealistic. I don't know if it's been, I, I think it'll be middle of the pack. I think it's going to be around 15th, which for the UK is decent. I'll, I'll take that. Like, I'm happy with that. Um, as for my score, I mean, you've had my positivity about it. You know, I'm standing. It's a nine out of 10 for me. Whoa! I appreciate that's a high score, but maybe maybe it's higher because of many years of being a British Eurofan. Finally, I'm like, yes! But um, yeah, no, I do think it's a really credible song. I think it's a really great entry and it's it's super fantastic to see the BBC. Cl- it's, it's so obvious they're putting in so much more effort. So yeah, nine. Back across that ocean, Suzanne. So, again, I really like the song. I think part of what I liked most was that James Newman just seemed so much more confident this year. Um, And it was a happy love song. It wasn't somebody stuck in the past, you know, just trying to get over somebody. Clearly, they've already moved on. Um, While I liked it, I wasn't blown away. Um, I'm giving it a 6.5. I wasn't blown away either, but I'm still really positive and optimistic. I think we saw with last year's staging plans that they teased um, after Eurovision, they do have ambition. They are thinking big. I thought last year the BBC production come together was actually better than the official Eurovision replacement show. I really liked the vibe, the energy. I thought it was positive in a dark time. So I think they have a lot of momentum going for them. And I think this Yeah, this continues that. I do think 15th or 16th is actually a good prediction, and that is not bad. That is far away from the bottom, okay, and moving towards the top. Um, I liked the music video. I thought it looked glossy. I thought it brought together nature and the urban environment very well. Love that tension. Love him connecting them through car and dance. My score is a 6.5. Now, we, of course, are not the only movie bloggers. There are dozens of us all over the world, including in the UK, Ireland, France, Italy, the United States, Australia, and beyond. And when we take the overall global average across all these people, we get... Oh, 6.82. So inching towards a 7. That is very, very respectable. That is, that's got to be one of the highest we've had for the UK in a while. Um, I'm pleased it's getting its credit. It deserves it. I'm, I'm pumped about that. That's great. Solid. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for James. And just for comparison, last year in our Wee Wee Jury, James Newman's overall score was a 6.08. So about a point lower almost. So that is a vast improvement. I was way below a 6 last year for... <laughs> Okay. All right. In, in any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Are the embers burning bright to you? Do you think he is going to light up Rotterdam? Let us know here on Wee Wee Blogs. And be Help. sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe because we've got more Wee Wee Jory videos coming soon. Like, follow, comment. There are so many social media outfits where you can connect with us through. Lucy, name what those are. 
Well, we've got Facebook, we've got Twitter. Basically, just search Weebly Blogs. You'll find us. <laughs> and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.